or it's making it similar, you know, uh, where you know you're trying to keep the rural areas together, something like that, so that there's there's similarity of concept. Uh, I'll give you an example. This feeds to your point too. I'm represented by John Boehner in, in Congress. Um, his district goes from the Miami Dark area, uh, which is very rural, uh, you know, beautiful part of Ohio. It swings around Montgomery County and goes down and picks up Butler County and Westchester, which is where he lives. Well, it swings around Montgomery County except for one little jag that comes in and picks up Huber Heights and uh, parts of Riverside and East Dayton. Well, I'll tell you, I love John Maynard. I mean, I like John a lot, and I think he's one of the better reps in Congress, but we have very little in common. I mean, when, when people think of our congressman in Montgomery County, they think of a guy named Mike Turner, who represents the inner core of Dayton, and it moves out to the, to the west, or the east, I'm sorry. So we feel a little bit disassociated with our congressman, and that's exactly what you're talking about. It, it, John never comes to Huber Heights because that's not really his district. He just picked it up through this reapportionment. Um, I will say this, uh, and this is going to end up being controversial on the campaign trail. First of all, the, the liberal rags are never going to endorse me anyway, so it's not going to matter. But the liberal rags really want me to be for one of two proposals that are floating through the House and the Senate at the state level right now. Both of them, one of them focuses on just making the apportionment board uh, different. Uh, the other one and really almost getting rid of the Secretary of State's role altogether, which I think is a mistake. The second one um, is like this big, mushy, uh, throw everything in a big database and let it, let it run through things and try to make this supposedly objective. I'll, I'll promise you right now there's nothing objective to politics. Uh, there would still be a board involved. These little tribunals would be set up to, to determine which one was fair. Uh, they take the jurisdiction away from the Supreme Court and give it to these little tribunals. I mean, the fact is, folks, elections matter. They have consequences. Um, these lines will always be somewhat subjectively drawn. Uh, I'd like to follow compactness and similarities in the district, but I also believe that you are the ones who decide who controls the 10-year plan through the apportionment board. Uh, the people have a certain role in that in determining who sits on that apportionment board, and I think that's an important part. And for any party or any ideal, I, you know, somebody that's trying to advocate for an idea to stand up and say, well, I just I want to get rid of the whole thing, I think is, frankly, uh, not only practically not going to happen, uh, it's also, I think, just political talking points to make the editorial boards happy. It's not going to happen, nor, in my opinion, frankly, should it happen. Um, to a certain extent, elections have consequences, and who we elect means what type of control you're going to have. Um, this particular year, it's super important because, you know, I'll, I'll be super political for a minute. If Governor Strickland hangs on and, and then they win one of the two races for Auditor State or Secretary of State, uh, you will have a Democrat-controlled House for probably 10 years. But let me give you an example where that didn't work. We had a Republican-controlled House for eight years, and then in the last two years, we lost control. Uh, even though they were Republican-drawn districts, why did we lose control? Because the Republican Party drifted from its values, uh, got off base, and the people of Ohio threw us out. Well, so there's a case where, you know, you couldn't draw the district lines well enough to keep that party in control because the people got frustrated. So, Who else? I have another county-related question. Um, <laughs> can't help it. Um, as a controller, maybe this is more at the county level, when I was a controller, you not only looked at how the money was being handled, but you looked at efficiencies or inefficiencies um, related to personnel. Like, right. are we overstaffed? Or do we have three people doing the same job? So you were always, um, I was always coming into a new job and looking at who was in the department and what they did, and was it inefficient? Because that, in essence, is money also. Right. Time, you know, time is money. So is that... Is any of that encompassed in a county, a county auditor job? Is that something that is encompassed when, when the state does an audit? Or does any of that get looked at? Because we know how efficient the government Very is. Very efficient. Yeah. Very so. <laughs> That'll be played back for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, uh, 
that I, I don't hear much out of the county auditors on that. But again, uh, you know, I'm sure they would. I'm sure the ADA of them would line up and tell me that's not true. We've, you know, I, I'm not saying they do or don't. I normally don't hear about. If, if they've done it, they've never captured enough attention. Uh, the state auditor, again, I'm gonna. I'm going to fine line it a little bit because it's my profession and I'm interested in making sure I'm correct and it may put all of you to sleep. Um, it's one thing to issue a historical financial audit, okay, in my opinion. At that point, the auditor state's job is not necessarily to come in and say, you know, look, Governor, if you would have done X, Y, and Z, you know, the auditor state's not a, a, not a legislative making body, okay, that we need to elect good reps, we need to elect good governors to, to do that, okay. Um, so I, I don't think I'm going to feel compelled to walk in and say, you know, your gambling proposal really stinks, Mr. Governor, and, and you know, that's not the function of a historical audit, okay? That said, that's very different than many of the things Mary Taylor has done, which are right, in my view. Uh, if, if I'm asked, for instance, the Medicaid had a performance audit done on it, billions of dollars were recommended for savings. That's perfectly appropriate, and what I'm trying to create is the distinction of two things here, okay? Um, I intend to use the notes to the financial statements as my little world of subjectivity. And for those of you that know what I'm talking about, you normally can learn more about an organization by reading the notes to those statements than you can just by looking at the statement itself. Um, it's the one area that CPAs often take a little bit of license in how they construct the story of the health of that financial condition, okay? Um, you know, I've talked a lot again to the press about this because they want to know. They're always curious. Well, when will you when will you use the bully pulpit? Is what they always ask. Well, it's very subjective. I, I wish I had a hard line. Here's the the three steps, but it, there is no three steps. Um, so the notes to those financial statements, maybe I throw in a little bit there when necessary. But certainly, with us pushing for performance audits, and I think the state ought to have them done on every agency. And there's actually a bill in the house right now that that would call for that. Dems aren't going to pass it, but they should, uh, and maybe the Republicans will if we take the House back. That would allow for, that's where the editorializing really needs to come in, and where they can come in and say, you know, House Bill 25, for instance, which is our plan to reorganize government and save several billion, you know, we could, we could pack a lot of editorializing and say, this is a place for you, for you to save money, if that makes sense. So it would be something separate from the financial audit. I, I think it almost has yeah. to be because when you're when the auditor state comes in to do the audit, his his or her job is not again to come in and criticize whether or not that local city council decided to purchase a building or not. Their job is to say, here's the financial health, and 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 was the decision made appropriately? I mean, if they if they if they chose to spend the money, then they have the authority to do it. That's wrong. Okay, that's a finding. That's an issue. Um, but it's to, it's to paint the financial health story, not editorialize on your county commission made a bad decision in my opinion that's that's your job to elect a good county commission now if I'm asked to come in and say how can we do better <laughs> well that'll be fun yeah. <laughs> nobody's gone to sleep yet that's disappointing <laughs> You actually have a group that pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> I, I 